What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerdcastle. Today in the world of indie games we're going to be checking out Odd Realm. A game that we played about a year ago when it first came out. And we did run into some bugs and we did run into some problems but that's to be expected with an early access game. I sat down last night with this title and tried to give it another run through just to see what had changed in a year. And actually it was a silky smooth experience. So let's dive on in and check it on out and you can figure out if this is something that you wanted to get for yourself. Uh, right now we gotta choose our race. So this game is like RimWorld, but in like a fantasy world. And also, I guess it's a little bit more Dwarf Fortress than it is RimWorld, in all honesty. But it's a colony sim builder where every race is kind of distinct from one another. They all have different needs and things that they want. And so anyways, right now the only races we can choose in the early access right now are human and ancient. Uh, the humans are pretty standard, like they need to farm to get food, uh, they breed, they have children, so on and so forth. Ancient is a little bit different and a tad more interesting. Ancients are kind of like Necrons in Warhammer 40k, except nicer. So like basically these dudes are eternal liches. They're human beings who have traded basically their mortality for eternal like soul power basically. And they actually can only continue existing off of void energy, which they mine from the soil. On top of that, they don't get new immigrants to their settlement. Instead, they have to dig around underground and they have to find like crypto sarcophagi, essentially, that have their people in it so that they can revive them and bring them back to life. And so I think we'll probably play, like last time I played humans, I think this time we should check out the ancients and see what's going on. So let's go ahead and change this over to the nerd castle. There we go, that'll be our realm name. We'll accept right there. Okay, and so now we gotta pick a spot for our map to be. I don't really know where the best place to begin is. I mean, I went ahead with like, I went with Taiga last time and it seemed to be perfectly fine. Like it didn't seem like there was that many issues. And so I'm figuring Taiga's kinda safe. I think everything green is actually Taiga. So we've got Taiga, we've got Voidlands. What does a void land do? A land shaped by void energy. Many strange creatures wander its red soils. Expect the unexpected when you venture into this odd place. We could try the void lands. Our neighbors are ferocious, huh? Our neighbors are untamed. Okay. Well, what's the difference over here? Untamed and untamed. Ferocious. I wonder what the difference between ferocious and untamed is. They're written in a different color, so I assume that ferocious is more violent than untamed. That's my guess. I mean, we could check out Voidlands. Might be kind of cool. I mean, our people don't need food, but they do need void energy, and if there was gonna be void energy anywhere, wouldn't it be in the Voidlands? So, like, let's settle it. Uh, we're gonna go on... Let's see, easy two ancients with their void woken minions searching for power. We can choose our own loadout, probably the worst ancient to have ever lived trying to survive. A single master of the void and two minions. We'll go with easy this time around, and so we will call this the void world. Perfect. All right, let's play the game. So here we are. I'm going to pause up the game real fast so that we can take a look. But this game uses a layer system, uh, much like Nemoria, I guess, where you can scroll up and down based on height. Uh, as of right now, you can see our little dudes right here. We have Ball the Deaf, and we have... Yixparabon the Jester. If we double click on these guys, we can actually set them up with various skills and get them moving. Basically, anything that they don't have a level 1 in, I'm going to enable because we don't have that many workers. That's going to kind of be our weakness on this playthrough is that we don't have a whole lot of people to do the jobs that need to get done. But hopefully they can fill in for each other's gaps. That's what I'm hoping and praying right now. I'm going to enable all these jobs. There's loads and loads of jobs in this game, like tons. There's everything from logging to woodworking to more esoteric stuff like evocation, void work, fight magic. I mean, there's a whole bunch of different skills in this game, and they will level them up slowly. Everybody also has their own, like, states, I guess, which are kind of like perks. And the perks aren't, like... So the perks aren't skills in the sense of like Fallout or anything like that. Instead, the perks are simply what they can do. Uh, so this guy is impressionable. So he just becomes happy or more unhappy over time. He seeks relaxation. He's an ancient. Uh, he can fight with melee weapons. He can fight with ranged weapons. He can fight with magic weapons. He's good at looting, so he can actually loot containers. Uh, he can carry things. And then he can also perform evocation ceremonies. And so like... You know, it's not so much like a skill that they have, it's more just like a list of what they can do before you move on to anything else, I guess. So our guys eat void crystals. Uh, we're going to need to get like some kind of shelter built before too long, and I actually think it's a really good idea that we just live underground. I I've tried living out on the surface, and it's doable, but 
while it's doable, doable is not easy or simple, and I like easy and simple. So we're just going to mine into the soil over here. We're going to play this thing like it's no more, and we're just going to be underground. I'm going to put a little 5x5 five five room right here. Well, maybe. Maybe I'll go up a little higher. There we go. Perfect. So we'll have that right there. And then I'm just going to put another one right here. And then I'll probably put another one right there. And then a fourth one right there. Perfect. So we have our little space. Uh, we'll go ahead and get that started. As you can see, our little void minions have, like, dove in, and they're starting to do all the work. Ancients are kind of hoity-toity. Ancients don't like to work. All right? They prefer to leave it all to the summoned demonic minions that they pull from the ether. And that's perfectly fine. We can consider that's these minions' punishment for being the bad guys. Uh, let's see here. These guys have 10,000 energy, so it'll last a little while, but it's not going to last forever. I'm going to speed the game up slightly in the hopes that maybe we can get some void stone knocked off. You guys accomplishing things over here? I don't have tools or anything like that. If I had tools, this would go a lot faster. Unfortunately, we're going to have to figure out what we want to do with the tools. But, like, once they get down this hallway, we'll actually be put, able to put a lot more of them to work. Down here in the bottom, we've got a number of different activities that we can do. So, right here, we've got jobs. Uh, I would say that logging is probably a pretty smart job because we're going to want to floor this area off and make it look like a home. So we'll get some logs started. That looks good to me. And then the other jobs that we have in order is we have mining, we have deconstructing, we have harvesting, we have cutting, we have looting, we have fishing, and we have water collection. Now the nice thing about the ancients is we're not going to have to deal with pretty much any of that. None of that is important because ancients only care about void crystals. Void crystals are pretty much the end-all, be-all for our people. And so we don't need food, we don't need water, we don't need any of that. We just need void crystals. All kinds of void crystals. You guys doing okay over here? This mining job is taking longer than I expected. I think void stone's a little bit tougher than your average stone. I think that much is for certain. Uh, I'll probably put that down to, like, right there. I don't know if they're going to get this done by the end of the day. We may have to come up with, like, a makeshift shelter or something for people to sleep inside of. Uh, it's actually 5 o'clock right now. I don't know how much... I think their energy only goes down, though, on these main guys if they actually do activities. So they shouldn't need to sleep for a little while. If we speed the game up, that might also help us out slightly. But having tools would make this go quicker. So if they had, like, pickaxes and stuff, they'd be able to mine this area much more rapidly. But we don't, so we kind of just have to live with the consequences. So, like, here's the downside to having minions as well, is that the minions, they, you see that little energy meter that's going down right now on Om Avu's, like, character card right there? That little 5,000 that's ticking downwards? That's how much void energy they have left. And once that's gone, they actually release their bonds to this world and they get banished back into the void. And so for right now... We're going to be low on minions pretty soon, and these poor little bastards out here are going to end up doing most of the labor once we get started. The good news is, it looks like they're probably going to get these rooms done before that becomes like a, a critical case. And so we should be able to turn one of these rooms into a crypt. Uh, we can turn this into a void crypt so that they have a place to sleep while they're working. And then we'll turn the other one into a workshop so that they can make mining tools so that they'll get through this job a little bit faster. And then once we've got that figured out, we'll probably go upwards and we'll make like another little corridor. And we'll make like a summoning room so that we can summon some more minions and make sure like we have what we need in order to keep people alive and working and healthy and all that kind of stuff. I personally actually think the void minions could probably do with having their, their energy probably like doubled maybe. Like, it's hard to keep yourself in minions. Like, I played with the Ancients for a little while, and it felt like I was, like, constantly summoning minions. Because, like, you just you run out of them all the time. Like, they're constantly burning out. So I'm thinking, like, maybe if they had, like, maybe 15,000 or 20,000 instead of 10,000, it might work a little bit better so that you're not... But maybe that's the point. Like, maybe the point is that you're supposed to be losing minions all the time so that you end up, you know, using all of your void magic to summon more, and you've got a constant search for more void energy. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so what we need to do now is we need to zone some of this stuff off. We've got a list of rooms over here. We need an immortality tomb, and we need it to be right there. And there's a couple of criteria that an immortality tomb needs. It needs an empty void weave sarcophagus, and it needs a void cell. So we can do that pretty easily by going to the build menu. And we've got the void cell right there, so I'm going to put that right there. And then we also need a void weave sarcophagus. And that one I'm not quite so sure where that's hiding. I don't remember. And so we're just going to have to, like, dig through and find it, I think. Ah, there it is. So we need stone chunks and a void shard. I'm going to put one right there and one right there so that we have two sarcophagi that can be put together. So you can see Expiraban the Jester 
is going through, and he's made the void crystal, which will now light up that little area. I love the illumination effects. We're putting in the sarcophagus right there so that when this guy gets tired from mining over here, he'll have a place to sleep. If they don't have a sarcophagus that they can get inside of, they will start to lose HP over time until eventually they die. They actually have to come in here and bask in the light of the void crystal, otherwise it's not going to work out so great for them. Uh, well, it looks like we just narrowly managed to get these two rooms done, which I'm actually thankful for. That's okay. So the second room right here, we want this to be a workshop. So there's our workshop space. In order for our workshop to function, it also has a few criteria. So we need a carpenter's table, we need a seat, and we need a cabinet. That's actually pretty easy. I don't think it's going to be too hard. So there's the carpenter's table. We can drop that right there. Uh, we need a seat, which goes in front of the carpenter's table. And then the cabinet is all the way down at the bottom, and we can put that right there next to that. And so they should mash that together very quickly so that we have a place to dwell. And this will allow us to live in here, and then our workshop, if we go to our workshopping menu, we actually have a crafting menu. I don't remember if we click on this or, let's see here, workstations. There we go. So inside of our workshop, we now have this little menu. I can't move this around, I don't think. I would like to be able to move this, I would think, but... I guess it's not super important for right now. Uh, we can make a stone pickaxe, and we can make a stone hammer and a stone hatchet. I would suggest that we make a couple of pickaxes for right now. So let's bang those out very, very quickly, because we're going to be doing a lot of digging trying to get this place put together. And so as you can see, he's hanging out over here, and apparently he's actually blacksmithing on top of the stool instead of on the workbench, but that's okay. I forgive him. Each of our characters does have like a full level up system, so as they level up, they will get more HP, they will get stronger, they will deal more damage, they will be able to do like things faster. And so we'll keep that in focus as well. Oh, there's a chicken over there. I wonder what I can do the chicken. I can probably kill it or something, but I don't know. Are we good with the pickaxes? Because now what we can do is we can double click on them and go to their inventory, and then we can just drag and drop some pickaxes onto them. That way, they can do a little bit better at mining. And they'll also have a weapon to defend themselves with if anybody attacks. So that raised their damage from 1d2 to 1d2 plus 6. So they deal 7 to 8 damage per hit. And now that we're all settled in right here, we got to get back to work and do a little bit more mining. So let's take that down the hallway right there. Uh, the minions will more than likely fill in for the first little chunk of it. But they will kind of fall off and disappear. We need to make room for a summoning chamber so that we can get more minions. And then on top of that, we need to make room for a transmutation chamber so that we can take objects like wood and flowers and stuff like that. And we can convert it into void shards. Because these are ultimately the lifeblood of our colony. If we don't have these little pink crystals right here, it's basically over for us. Oh, they found void shards. Nice. I didn't realize... Unless those void shards are the minions that exploded, they might be. Let's watch this little minion right here when he explodes and see if he becomes void shards. Because if we found void shards beneath the soil, that's really, really good. Goodbye, little buddy. Oh, cool. So you actually, it looks like you partially get some of the void shards back. Each one of the minions, I think, costs five void shards, so it looks like you get yourself a little bit of a refund every single time one of them dies. I'm down with refunds. Uh, I need you to, why are you not mining? What's up, man? That's metalwork. That's logging. That's woodworking. Where is mining at for you? There it is. I need you to help out with these tunnels. It's kind of a non-negotiable, my guy. I kind of need this to happen. It's non-negotiable. So dive on in here and help him get this thing done. But as you can see, they go much more rapidly once they have pickaxes or whatever. If this is your first time playing the game, it's not for me. There's actually like dialogue and like a little storyline too, but only on the first time you play the game. And so unfortunately we don't get to know our characters very much this time around. <laughs> but if you're playing for the first time, you'll get like dialogue between the characters talking about landing in this new country and you know, wanting to survive and live and thrive and all that kind of stuff. So just so you're aware, what is that right there? Energy? Is this room functioning? So he has zero energy right now. He should go back to the sarcophagus and sleep inside of it. Is the immortality tomb okay? It's of poor quality, but the immortality tomb should be functioning. 
I don't know why it's not. Now, he should go back and sleep. Hey, there we go. He finally went and laid down. Nice. What about this guy? Okay, so perfect. They finally used the... I don't know. I unassigned it and I reassigned it. And now they're using it, so... That's fine. I just wanted to make sure the Immortality Tomb was working, because if it's not, we're going to die a horrible death. So, we kind of want to get that fixed. That's sort of important. Like, it kind of needs to happen. You guys get back to work. I got jobs for both of you, and we got stuff to accomplish in this video. So let's keep mining out the soil here and seeing if we can find our way. Are you guys getting, like, stronger? I need you guys to get stronger. Like, it's possible that maybe they don't go back to the Immortality Tomb right when their energy hits zero. Perhaps there's, like, a critical value on their HP that they hit before they have to go back and regenerate in order to keep them, like, long-term productive. I don't really know. I figure that guy's a Thaumaturge, and what is this guy? He's a Summoner, so we have a Thaumaturge, and we have a Summoner. Given my Final Fantasy XIV knowledge, I'm pretty, th I'm pretty sure Thaumaturges heal or something. I don't know what a Thaumaturge does. I don't know... Mm. I don't know stuff about things, unfortunately, but I know that Thaumaturges in that game are healers, so I don't, I don't know. Maybe it'll be okay, maybe it won't. I know what a summoner does, though. That's very, very self-explanatory, but for right now, everybody is a digger, and that's all they need to know about it. Just dig, 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 dig. All day long. That's your only job. Look upon the soil, find it revolting, and remove it. And then we'll also install, like, some wooden floors and stuff in here. We'll decorate. We'll make it look nicer. Trust me, it'll be okay. Everything's going to work out. We do have some void shards laying around. I would like to make some storage rooms or something later on, but I'll probably leave that for when it's absolutely necessary. Like, this guy right here has 413 HP. He went to the crypto sarcophagus or whatever when he had, like, 200 of the nano weave or the void weave or whatever it is when he was at, like, half health. So maybe that's what it is. Maybe they go back when they're at, like, half health and they rest inside of here. Either way, we've prepped new locations for any new brothers we might find beneath the soil of the ancient race, so that might work. Now, we can set up some rooms. Other rooms that I really, really wanted to have, uh, either a... We've got a retrograde Arcanum. We've got a transmutation chamber. We can probably put in a transmutation chamber. I don't know exactly what it takes to get transmutation going, but having our magical locations all nice and isolated is probably a good plan. So like, oh no, I don't want that to be right there. That's a mistake. Let's put that right there. Okay, so we have our chambers now. For the transmutation chamber, we need a lectern of knowledge. We need a seat, and we need a bookcase. So I don't know what a lectern of knowledge looks like. That's a temporal displacer. All right. I don't know what that is either. I don't know what a lot of things are right now in our little culture. Uh, I'm, a little, I'm a little vexed. Let's see if we can find this lectern, though. I mean, we know we need a bookcase, too, right? So bookcase, are you around here? There's a lectern of knowledge, so we'll put the lectern right there. Uh, we need a seat, which will go in front of that. And then a bookcase was the final piece of the puzzle here to get this thing up and running. I'm not going to give them any tasks or whatever to really work on for right now. I'd rather not. We've got a wooden gate. I don't think we need a wooden gate. I need a bookcase. You got a bookcase around here somewhere? I do wish that, like, maybe there was, like, a little, like, right here. You see this empty space? It'd be cool if you could type in words right there, and then it would just show you the item that you're looking for inside of the crafting menu because I do find myself pretty free. Maybe I'm just dumb, but very, very frequently I find myself like staring at this list trying to find like the one thing that I need until eventually I give up and I go through each and every single one. There's the bookcase. That's what we needed. So the bookcase can go right there. You guys hop into action and get all this stuff built. This transmutation chamber, I've actually never built this as of yet, so I'm interested to play around with this and see what happens. We've got plenty of wood and we've got plenty of fibers laying around, so I think we should be all right. That man's out of energy, so what can I do with this room right here? Let's have a look at our workstations menu. And we have a transmutation chamber. So it looks like we can make void shards out of wood. We can make void shards out of chunks of stone. Which is actually a really, really good thing that I think is going to be helpful. Alright. Uh, I am going to rebuild all the walls in here so that they look a little bit nicer later on. But for right now, good. We've got ourselves another workstation. Uh, the final workstation that we need to get put together is the summoning chamber. So we can actually summon some more demons to come work for us. Inside the summoning chamber, we need a void cell, we need a void catalyst, and we need a dais. Okay. So we've got the void cell. 
What does a void catalyst look like? Oh, we need a bronze ingot for that. Okay, so maybe we're not ready for the summoning chamber yet. If we're not ready for the summoning chamber, instead what I'll do is we will get rid of the summoning chamber. And we will turn this into a foundry instead so that we can blacksmith. Now in the foundry, we need to have a furnace, we need to have a cabinet, and we need to have a stool. And that should be really, really easy. So there's a furnace right there. So we'll just put in like, yeah, a couple of furnaces. And then we need, not a wood seat, we need stools. So we'll put in a couple of stool samples right there. And then the final thing we need is a cabinet, which we'll throw onto the side right there. I'll decorate it up a little bit, make it look a little bit nicer in here. Uh, we are probably going to knock out most of these walls and refill them uh, with space so that we can like make these areas more beautiful because your people do care like what the room looks like, unfortunately. So we are going to have to like adapt around that. We, however, haven't actually really found any stone resources. So there's some copper over here, but they want bronze. So that means we need to find tin. Oh, really? There's a void crystal node? Can I mine that? Hold on. Yeah, mine that. I've never actually seen a void crystal node in the wild before. I thought they were just... I thought they were just legends. Alright, we'll go ahead and get that all ready to go with the copper on that side. What are those? Just a prop, like a big stone? Okay. Is there anything on top of the mountains? This valley actually looks pretty nice. I, I think this is probably a good place to live. I probably should have gone up the mountain and made the entrance to our base like up here in this little area so that people actually have to like travel across like terrible terrain in order to get after us. But I can live with the decisions that I've made. And we're a little light on trees. I do wish we had a few more trees, but such is life. Such is life. All right, well, back down to our main little area right here. Uh, we assigned them to go get some copper, but we haven't found any ore veins or anything down in here just yet. Wish that we had, but unfortunately we haven't. Yeah, there you go. Mash that stuff together. So now we have a forge, which means that we can make metals. Which means metal tools and metal weapons and all that kind of fun stuff, just in case you were interested. Uh, this guy looks like he's gone over here to possibly gather up that copper, I think. I don't know. I wonder if that's a vein, though. I wonder if there's more underneath it. If there is, that would be helpful. The downside is I don't have anywhere to store this stuff because I haven't made a storeroom yet. So, we should probably make a storeroom, too. I know it's a little energy intensive, but... If we could just find, like, a location for all of our refined goods. So, like, we put, like, a big room, like, right there. With a door on either end. And then do the same thing over here with kind of a door on either end. I think that job's gonna take a little while, but once it's done, we'll be able to put like, you know, stone and wood. We'll make a custom stockpile over here. We'll make a custom stockpile over here. That'll get the hallways cleared out so that there's a lot less roughage laying around. That way their mood might go up ever so slightly instead of them sitting around just being grumpy pants all the time. But we're down to two workers right now. So if we can get the bronze ingots made, that's the other part, is I'm kind of hoping we'll hit tin down here so that we'll have one copper and one tin. That way we can make the summoning chamber. Once we make the summoning chamber, we can basically create our own workforce from scratch, and this will go a lot faster once we're at that point. But for right now, we just got to hang out and dig. My name is Splattercat. This game is called Odd Realm. I'm really excited about this title. This is one of those titles that seem to understand kind of the Rimworld, Dwarf Fortress, Nomoria vibe, and just like hit it right on the nose. I love the graphical stylings. The game is much more polished now than when I played it a year ago, which is fantastic. Games like these have a lot of moving parts, and so the earliest accesses to them can be a little bit rough. Like, trust me, I was there for, like, Alpha 1 of RimWorld back in the day, all right? I was there, and while RimWorld is, like, a perfect game now, in that first Alpha, it was very, very rough and, like, very, very hard to play and had all kinds of things that went weird. This game was no different when it came out about a year ago, but there has been significant progress from what I've played so far. I've had no issues since coming back after kind of watching it for a year. So anyways, if you want to check the game out, i got a link for you down below on itch.io. This game will have a Steam release later on, but that time is not right now. Alright? If you enjoyed this video, make sure you leave a like on it. If you don't know who I am and what I do, my name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile every single day in the world of indie gaming so that you don't have to. Oh, look. What a surprise. You leave some of your land for two minutes to return. You've got a bad case of settlers. Hey, you better skedaddle before I return with backup. Fair warning. Apparently, banditos have things to say to us. They've got drama that they want to spark, chat. They've got drama. I'll see y'all next time. Thank you for stopping on in. How you doing? Take care.